hier ist Adina von morecar.de und ich sitze hier im Underground in Köln mit dem Sänger von Counterparts, mit Brandon Murphy and hi, here we are. Um, so, how are you doing today? I'm okay. Um, You're okay? Uh, little, still a little tired. I think I broke my foot in my sleep, but... I don't know. I woke up and I can't really move my right foot, but uh, I'll li I'll live. It'll, it'll be okay. Maybe if they take it, whatever you know. If it has to go, it has to go. I'll, I'll make do. <laughs> okay, great. So we'll see that. Yeah. Um, could you introduce yourself? Just who you are to everyone who doesn't know yet. Um, that I feel like that's probably a lot of people. Uh, I my name's Brennan. I play. Uh, I yell about shit in the band um, counterparts. I've heard that you've been to Paris and Karlsruhe already this tour and how was it? They were good. Par yeah, Paris was cool. I feel like Paris is always pretty low key in terms of um in terms of attendance uh unless you're like, you know, a giant band, but um you know, our show was cool. Kids seemed into it. Uh Karlsruhe last night was like that was awesome. That, that was a really good show. Um when you're on to tour, do you ever get the time to visit a little bit of the city you're in or do you, did you see the uh Eiffel Tower, maybe, or um, I we like we've. Uh, I feel like a lot of like the the more like touristy stuff. We we did that on our first time we were over here because it was like you know Europe was was new to us. So um, we definitely made it more of a point to to go and explore and you know do all that stuff. But um, one of the the big advantages of being in a bus is that when we wake up, you like we drove here overnight and I woke up here. Like I woke up at the venue. So you know it, it's definitely. Being in a bus and, and doing like you know like uh you know and having somebody you sleep while someone's driving, you know it definitely makes it easier to to get up and go explore because you, you don't really you don't really have a choice you know you wake up at you wake up at ten or eleven in the, in the afternoon and you can't load in until four so you know I have to kill five hours so what can you do you know then you start looking up like oh we're in Paris we'll go to the Eiffel Tower you know we're in um, Just like a anywhere, you know, like there's there's lots of, um, you know, here we can go to Burger King right there, and that's, <laughs> you know, that's that's a sight to see. So. How do you get along with your support act? Uh, everyone's great. Yeah, we we've, we've been chilling. Like, um, we're I, we're actually on the bus with Census Fail. Those guys are great. You know, they awesome awesome guys. Great band. Uh, Capsize. This is our third, I think, tour with Capsize, and they're um. You, like they're, you know, they're every time we get to tour with those guys, it's always fun. So, so. Samsung Fail, for example, are following you around for quite a while now, yep. and they have a lot of experience. Definitely, yeah. Did you learn something from them? Something um, really um, new? My, uh, like on this tour, I mean, they they in have general, uh, in 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 general, I mean that that band was like, you know, that band was a big influence on, uh, you know, some of the early bands that I played in. Like in the eighth grade, I played in a band and we covered a song "Bite to Break Skin" by Senses Fail, you know, and now. Here we are. I don't even know how many years that is later. Like that was what 2004. So yeah, like uh, I guess 11 years later, and we're headlining and they're supporting us. And you know, it's it's crazy. And just just the fact that they've been on, they've been touring longer than we've been a band. So they have so many stories and so many examples and just you know, they're, they're you know, it's, it, they just. Uh, There's a lot of wisdom in it because they have been around for so long and they've been you, like hearing stories about them being on tour and like not having cell phones or GPS and you know not there wasn't like so Wi-Fi and stuff like that like <laughs> I like to hear those stories but if I had to live li like that like if I if I had to tour like that I'd it'd be miserable <laughs> because we're you know we're younger we when we started touring we had cell phones. If you don't know it any different way maybe it's okay. Yeah for sure but now to go back like, to move backwards it's that's not. Yeah, that's It's not very. <laughs> it wouldn't be very fun for us, for sure. So the last shows in Cologne you've had were good. So what are you looking forward to tonight? Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's more tickets sold than like the people they can allow into the venue. So that rules. That's you know what great. I mean? So Definitely. so like so they're going to be packing more people in. Like I I don't know from the the thing that I saw. I think I think the show's sold out or it's really close to being sold out. So. Um, so yeah, I, I you know I would expect a cool show. You know, at the very least, at least if, if, if that if that many people are are buying tickets, then I guess that's a good indicator that the, yeah, show, the show might be pretty cool tonight. Coming so. To see you, so yeah, yeah, you that's know, that's, and that rules. That's um, I think this is probably going to be one of the bigger shows on the tour. So yeah, we're, looking, we're all looking forward to playing. But this is the first time you're a headliner, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, good. the the first time we came to Europe was in 2012, and that was. Um, 
we headlined, but it was only because it was like just it was our first time over here. So uh, we okay. you know we can't you can't do support tours for bigger bands unless you sort of prove that you're that you can hold your own. So that was that was a headliner, but I mean like I said that was our first time over here, and you know the shows weren't crazy, but they were definitely cool for considering we've never been to this part of the world before. So. Okay, and how did you ever discover that singing is your thing or screaming? Um, I, I, I think just, just through playing in bands, like, you know, yeah. some of the, like, Jesse and I, we used to play guitar in this band, and we used to try and write songs on guitar, and I, I mean, I like playing guitar, it's fun, but I don't think I, I have the technical ability that he has, so, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be dragging behind, and I don't want to try and play guitar in a band of our, a band that, you know, takes as much technicality, like, he, I, I, I think it would be difficult for me to try and learn our songs, like, you know, if, if I was in a, if I was in a pop band or if I was doing something, uh, something a little bit easier on guitar, like I definitely, like I think I could, I think I could do it. Our stuff, nah, like no, no chance. So I let let Adrian and Jesse and actual like good guitar players do it, as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to you know my but ability. But like this is fun for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, yeah. doing. Yeah. I like doing. Vo I mean, I like I like writing. Uh, I like writing. I, li I like. Um, I like the lyrical aspect, you know, I like having a platform to say the shit that I need to say, and, um, so it's cool. I, I mean, I, w I definitely wish I could, I wish I could sing, like, actually sing, that would be nice, but, I don't know. Have you tried that? Nah, <laughs> not, not enough. I think I did it once and was, not. Nah, uh, I'll stick to yelling about shit instead of, uh, trying to and hit that's notes. That's also something you have to learn, not everybody can of course, re yeah. yell really good. Yeah, I def mean, I mean <laughs> it took me a minute, but, yeah, I guess it worked. Sort of. <laughs> I mean, I'm here, so. Yeah. Um, your ba band is named after a song by Alex is on fire. Yep. And oh, yeah. um, that I've heard there are rumors about them getting back together. What do you think? Uh, I th I think they did get back together. I mean, o honestly, uh, I'm not. You know, we we picked the band name. Um, obviously, like you know that that self-titled record by them is a huge like. You know that, that that was a that was a huge thing for a lot of people our age in terms of mm -hmm. that I feel like for us that was like that was one of the earlier examples I could I can think of that sort of um, showcased both really heavy and really melodic and you know very and like just that musicianship. Um, so. We were curious because we thought when you are recording your next album and are the last ones there are always times in between where you're not. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. What do you do? Um, but yeah, I mean, when when we're not recording or even like when we're not on tour and stuff like that, we do just try and relax because the, this is more or less this is our job now. So you know, downtime it has to be downtime or we go crazy. You yeah, know? of course. Um, okay, when you grew up, what was the band that influenced you and your musical way the most? Uh, I think it was the Used. Uh, that the Used self title is probably my favorite record ever. Yes, we were. Uh, um, also thinking about uh, that, the older, yeah, hardcore songs yep. and bands, they were always about, yeah, political topics or sure, society yeah. issues, yeah. and now many of them are singing or yelling about um, themselves, mostly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and, I, and, yeah I Do mean, you think I it's this thing that y they want uh, everyone to relate more to it, or um, how did you think it got there? I don't know. I, I, I feel. I feel like, in terms of, uh, I mean, obviously, there's there's always going to be bands that have a high amount of, um, like, a political insight, and there's always going to be bands that, uh, they're, you know, they're a band to convey one message, whether it's about politics or whether it's about, you know, they're like if you're like a vegan band or if you're a straight edge band or you're a straight edge vegan band or whatever. Um, there's always going to be bands that sort of have this, this. This me you know this message behind the band, whereas um, you know, and in terms of something like politics, I feel like nowadays, you know, kids that are starting bands might not necessarily have their ear to the ground in terms of what's going on in the politics. So they don't, I mean, that's exactly why I don't write about it because I, you know, for I don't want to say I mean maybe I could be considered ignorant because of it, but I stay up uh, up on politics enough to to where I, I like. You know, I, I need I need to know what I need. I, it's basically like need to know. Like if I need to know this, this shit, I'll learn it, and that's all. But I'll, I think you a lot don't of keep track all the time. Yeah, yeah, like have you know, the real insight into the topic. Of course, okay. of course. Yeah, I mean, well, then it's definitely the better decision yeah, not yeah, to write I, about I, it I because know, and I feel like writing about you should yourself. always 
writing, writing things you know. Hey, writing that, that, that was exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Yeah, like okay. writing about things you know is, is you know, okay, so kind of hard to um, fake it. Do you prefer the smaller clubs or the big ones? Uh, I think it really depends on the tour. Uh, for us, I mean, if we were coming over and doing this tour and playing thousand cap rooms, I think we'd be miserable because not that many people are coming. Uh, I, I, I like a, we all like a good mid-level, like a nice 500 cap, three to 500 cap room, like that's, you know, that's cool for us. Every now and then, obviously, we'll tour with Architects and play a 2,000 cap venue, or we'll play a show in a house in Hamilton, Ontario, and play a basement that can hold 60 kids. So, you know, so, uh, I, I like, I think that definitely having, um, having variety there just keeps things interesting, because if we were to play only 500 cap venues for the rest of our lives, it'd be kind of boring, you know, there'd be no growth, you know? there's not, okay. there's no more or less people coming, like, what's going on? Yeah, you kind of need the variety. Yeah. Um, so, tonight there is a thing called Blood Moon. It's about okay. four in the morning, and right. the moon has a very uh, special angle, so it's okay. really big and really red, and we wanted to know whether you know about this and whether you want to watch it. Um, I didn't know about it, but I know about it now, so I mean, now, so 4 a.m., like, okay, yeah, we'll, um, I'm, I mean, show and then yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll play the show. <laughs> And then, yeah, hopefully, if we're not passed out by then, uh, yeah, we'll just look out the look out the bus yeah, and okay. try and check the moon out for sure. <laughs> now that I know, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. Then have a great show. Thank you, thank I'll you. be there. I'll be watching, and uh, then I'll tell you what I think. Cool. Please <laughs> do. Okay. Thank you. No problem.